Hello everyone, this is O2. Are you ready to breathe in some fresh open frameworks? This video is part one of a series of videos that teaches you how to make a simple game with open frameworks. And this is going to be our final result. So let's head right into it. So first of all, we're going to ha learn how to use the project generator. The project generator is an app that lets you easily make open framework projects. So let's go to the open frameworks folder, go to the project generator folder and click on the project generator.exe. Now we're going to change our project name into my simple game. And although the current platform is configured for Visual Studio 2017, we can later change this to Visual Studio 2019 using um, Visual Studio. So don't worry about that now and click on the generate button. Let's open in IDE. And like I said, we can retarget our project to the Visual Studio 2019 version. So press OK. And we're going to open our source files. So main.cpp. I normally um, place the main.cpp file to the right side. So click and drag and... Oh, it needs another... Oh, it needs another file open. So, so click and drag and place it in the right side. And also I place my, oops, I place my OF app dot header file on the right side as well. So this is our basic open framework setup. Now we're going to need to download OFX GrabCam. So let's go to Google and type OFX GrabCam. So OFX GrabCam is an open framework add-on made by Elliot Woods. And if you look at the description, it's a camera for browsing your 3D world in open frameworks and picks the XYZ position under the cursor so all your mouse actions are performed relative to that point in 3D space. So basically, um, Open Frameworks has a default camera for navigation, but OFX GrabCam um, has more um, functionality similar to Google SketchUp and other 3D, so 3D conventional software. And I find it easier to use, so we're going to download OFX GrabCam. And I'm just going to extract it in my desktop folder for now. So once we've done that, um, the important thing is that we need to rename the folder and we're going to delete the math, the master and the dash so it becomes OFX GrabCam only. Let's open the open frameworks folder and we're going to add this folder to the add-ons folder so you can see some other default add-ons that were downloaded with open frameworks. And then we oh we also have to reload our project generator app. So let's open our project generator app again. And this time instead of making a new project, we're going to import our simple game. And we're going to add the GrabCam add-on, which will update the file. And you can also click open in ID or reload your project, but I just clicked open in ID and we're going to click OK. And OK for found a suitable location for browsing the database and the room. OK. And since I. Yeah. Reload. So since I opened two apps, I'm just going to turn one. I'm just going to 
turn the previous app off yeah and we're going to try um, debugging but before that we have to choose whether our window system is you is a 32-bit windows or a 64-bit windows so for me I'm using 64-bit windows and if you want to check which one you have you can go to the command prompt and I'll just make this a bit larger for you guys system info oh system type over here we can see that this is a 64 based PC so we're going to try debugging and see if everything's all right yeah everything's working so now let's try including our grab cam so let's go OFX grab and we can see that the header file is automatically recognized so let's type let's make an instance of the grab cam called camera we're going to go to our setup function and we're going to just write camera stuff to organize stuff and We're going to set our position of the camera. So this is X, Y, Z coordinates, X, Y, Z positions. And then we're going to set the look at. We're going to make this um, camera look at position 0, 0.0.0. 0, 0. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we're going to set our far clip and near clip. So I'm going to set my far clip to around 6,000. I think this will be enough. And the near clip would be 0.5. So if you guys don't know what a near clip and a far clip is, um, you might um, want to have a look at what a camera frost trim is. So let's go to Google frost trim, frost trim. So it's also called a uh, view frost trim. And in 3D computer graphics, um, this is the region of space that may appear on the screen. So the near clip is the yellow part and the far clip is the bigger rectangle. So anything that is within this um, frost trim is rent is seen on the screen and anything that is outside this boundary isn't um, seen in the screen. So we just set those parameters and there we go. And last but not least, we're going to um, camera, we're going to set the toggle fix up direction in enable enabled. So what this uh, does is um, it always keeps the camera's up position fixed, which is also very handy. And after this, we will go to the draw function and let's make a camera dot begin curly brackets, then camera dot end. So anything between these the begin and the end that needs to be updated that needs to be drawn in the screen can come um, over here and let's click to compile and let's compile so everything's working but we don't have any <laughs> clue if there is a camera or not because we don't have any anything to see through with the camera so let's just create eight uh grid so if draw grid is we can and it accepts a step size and the step size is 1.25 f by default and if we make it a, at around 10, this will make uh, 
larger grid. So let's see if everything's working. Oh yeah, so we have our camera and this is our grid. And if you use the right, right mouse, left, left mouse, you can rotate and the right mouse zooms and the middle mouse, um, you can move in any direction you want. Um, next thing is to download the 3D models. So let's go to Google and type Mixamo. So Mixamo is a site where you can download free characters and characters with animations. So it's very useful. And if you have an Adobe account, you can just log in with it. And if you don't, then you will need to sign up. But remember that everything is free, so it's worth signing up. And you can sign up with Google, Facebook, Apple IDs. And because I have an um, Adobe account, I, I will just use my Adobe account to sign in. Called the first the first character was called Thai. So we're going to look at Thai. Hello Thai. And we're going to go to animations and just find a basic walking animation. And we're going to click in place. So it it can loop forever. And we're going to download. So I'm going to um, save it as tie.fbx. And next, we're going to find AJ. So this is AJ. And since we already chose the walking animation, it will this the walking animation will also be inserted into AJ. So we just need to click on the download button. Save this as AJ.fbx and remember the file names are important. Next we will download Kaya. Kaya.fbx and last but not least oh yeah big Vegas but I'm just going to rename this file as Vegas and download it so Vegas.fbx and download next we're going to need to download another add-on and it's going to be called OSXFBX by Nick Hardman and what this add-on does it allows um, you to easily import FBX files and play animations so we're going to download the zip and while we're waiting um, for the OFX FBX file to download Let's go to our Open Frameworks folder, go to our apps, My Apps, My Simple Game, and Bin, Data, and let's move all of the characters we downloaded into this data folder. So four in total. And once our OFX FBX file folder is Download it. Let's extract that. And we're going to re have to rename it to OFX FBX. So delete the dot dash and the master. And we are going 
going to move this to the add-on folder like before, turn the project generator app off, and then turn it back on. We should import our My Simple Game and click the OFX FBX <laughs> add-on and let's update. And this time it should be, we should just need to reload it. There we go. Then let's try including the OFX um, FBX dot header. There we go. And let's try compiling again. Okay. We have an error and it says the build tools for Visual Studio 2017 cannot be found. So it we need to retarget the solution again. So let's go to project, retarget solution, press OK, and try compiling it again. We have another error. Link one one two zero two forty five unresolved externals. Hmm. So the problem was because the OFX FBX add-on, um, in order to compile the debug mode using the add-on, you have to unzip the lib in this directory. So I'll show you guys where the directory is. If you go to the Open Frameworks folder, add-ons, and go to the OFX FBX folder, then go to libraries, this folder, lib, vs version 64, debug. You have to unzip this um, library here. But after um, running it in, in debug mode, I found it was very slow. So if you want to um, compile faster, you should always um, use the release mode when you're building um, using uh, the OFX FBX um, add-on. So if you try compiling in the release mode, it should work properly. And there we go. So let's continue. First, let's create a light. Then we're going to create a vector container of OFX XBX type. And we're going to call this group of models. Let's go to our setup. And first of all, we want to call the OF this disable arp text. So what this does is by default open frameworks uses rectangular textures instead of um, 2D textures. So if we call this disable arp text function, then we're good we can use um, 2D textures. Next we're going to set our frame or frame rate to 30. And the reason why it's 30 is if you recall, when we downloaded the FBX files from Mixamo, the frame rate was um, 30, 30 frames per second, so we need to match it. So that's why it's 30 frames per second. And then we're going to set our light position to the to minus 300 300 300 uh oh 300 300 300 which is going to be the um left up um left up front position so it's going to be 
yeah, it's going to be here. <laughs> and then um, we're going to create a, a string array of strings that has a length of four. We're going to call this model names. And this is going to be the, um, so we're going to go to our bin data file and these are the fpx file names, so ajf.fpx and Thai Kaya Vegas. Thai.fpx Vegas FPX and Kaya. Actually, this is one way of doing it, and if you want to include um, more FBIC files in the future, or um, somehow dynamically add um, more files when the um, application is running, you can always make um, this dynamic. And so we're going to make a vector container of string type and call this model names. Next, we're going to make a for loop and import all of these um, FBX files one by one. So this is going to loop over four times because the size of the model names vector container is, right, is currently four. So next, we're going to access the settings and then the file pass is going to be the model names model names index and then we want to see um, the process so we want to debug it so we're going to set the print info to true then next, we're going to make an instance of the OFX FBX class, and if this, and if each file um, loads properly using the settings we made above, we're going to const. We're going to say loaded the scene. Okay. And then we're going to set the animation. Um, so FBX files um, have um, can I, can hold multiple animations, and the uh, current files um, we downloaded have two animations. The first one is the default state, which actually doesn't move, so it's just um, a still model. And the second animation is um, them walking. So when we say we set animation zero, it's going to say um, we just want to import the animations. We just want to import the models without any, without them walking. So they're just going to be still. And then later on, we're going to change this value to one, which will um, start, which will make them walk as they are supposed to. So right now they're just going. Right now it's going to be zero, and then we're going to set the positions. Um. So only the x x position is going to be different per model, and this will just make them align. This will align them in one straight line by the x axis, and we're going to. Um, store these models inside the vector container and if the models don't load successfully 
we're going to notify ourselves by saying error loading the scene. There we go. And last but not least, we're going to set our background color to gray so that when if we need to display some text it will be shown quite clearly because we might need to use white or black text So first of all, we're going to um, enable the depth test. So what this does is, if you look at the, dis at the description, it turns on depth testing, so rendering happens according to Z depths rather than draw order. So this um, makes use of the depth buffer and knows if the object or fragment is actually in the front or not and renders accordingly. And then we're going to um, enable the light. And when we call this um, function, it actually calls the OF, o, OF enable lighting function as well. So what the OF enable lighting function does is it, it enables the global lighting state. But in contrast, um, when we call the light dot disable, it does not call the OF disable lighting. So we need to um, separately call this function to in to completely get rid of any light remaining. And Right. And we actually don't need to draw the grid anymore. So let's just comment that out. And let's just set the color to white. And for auto FBX of from the group of models. We're going to draw the models. And then let's add the OF disable depth test at the end. OF disable depth. Okay. So we're good to go and let's try compiling. So um, since we loaded the animation, the first animation, I'm getting this um, situation where um, the my application kind of stops and then starts again, which is caused by my antivirus software. So if you guys have any problems, unknown problems, while um, your application is running, it's probably because of your antivirus software. So might, you might need to take a look at it. But anyway, um, since I set my animation number to zero, um, none of my FBX models are moving. So if, you, if I change my animation to one by default and start the application again. This time you can see the animations performing their actions.
Yes, they're all moving now. And let's also move our um, camera position. It should move up 200. And let's just move it further to the front. There we go. And if you can see um, the It's because of my antivirus software. <laughs> and if you see the animation stacks, you can see that there are actually two animations inside our FBX files. The first one is called take 00.1, which was, which is just the model itself and no animation. And the walking animation is somehow called mixamo.com. And we're using the animation, the second animation, which is in index number one. Look at that. So another problem you can identify is that all of the models are in the same position. And the reason is because when we are um, pushing these um, FBX files inside our container, vector container, um, the position properties is somehow not being copied pr properly. So instead of um, copying the FBX files entirely, where we should just make a shared pointer type with a type of OFX FBX and so instead of copying the mesh entirely we can just copy the pointer so instead of OFX FBX FBX Instead of making an instance here, like this, we can make uh, make a shared pointer of OFX FBX and call this OFX, uh, sorry, and call this OFX, call this FBX. And instead of the dot operator, we're going to need the arrow operator now because we're dealing with pointers. So since we changed all of the dot operators to arrow operators, this should be good to go. So, and we can also make our window larger to, um, to see these um, cute models in a bigger environment. And yeah, this is um, our final outcome. We successfully um, imported four FBX models and, play, and we are playing their animation. And in the next two videos, we're going to build upon this um, example to make a more com concrete and complex structure for our game. So thanks for tuning in and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.